Thanks for joining us for another Text Nation interview. Our focus this time, smart glasses. And joining us is Paul Travers, president and CEO at a company called Vuzix, V-U-Z-I-X. Thanks for joining us, Paul. Yeah, Fred, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Well, tell us some background, first of all, for people who aren't familiar with Vuzix. Tell us about the company. Yeah, sure. We we have been in business for quite some time, actually. The very beginning of the virtual reality industry with consumer electronics back in 93, believe it or not. 93, uh, wow. So we've been at it for a long time, making all the big, bulky, crazy headsets that a lot of folks you see today even. Um, but in 97, I bought the first company out, restarted Vuzix, and we had a focus on the defense space. We made these thermal weapon site engines that the special forces guys used. And we made this product called Attack Eye, which was a monocular display that went in front of one eye, it was a high resolution thing. And you could throw a robot in a building and the special forces guys could drive the robot inside the building and be able to see what the robot was seeing through our eyepiece. Those guys asked us if we could make glasses that look like Oakley style sunglasses. And since then, we've learned that big and bulky, people can't use it, you can't go to work with it. So we make smart glasses today for enterprise. They're being used in the medical industry right on through to manufacturing plant floors around the world today. Our business has really been taking off and we have been working on solving that Oakley gate problem that the special forces guys talked about, making glasses that have that cool, sexy look and feel. And in fact, one of the things we announced at the Consumer Electronics Show was our next generation smart glasses, which have that really look and feel of a fashion forward kind of an industrial design. That said, today, most of our products are being used for remote support kinds of applications. Maybe you have a doctor in Africa who's trying to do maybe a open heart surgery his first time on a particular part of the surgery. He'll get like an Ohana One expert doctor in San Francisco to log into a special portal. It's no nothing more than like a Zoom call. In fact, you could do it over Zoom even. And the guy's got our glasses on doing the operation live and that doctor in San Francisco can see and help him and telestrate on the screen and kind of do this remote, let me help you do that operation kind of stuff. Or you flip it around, a doctor could be using our glasses streaming and teaching somebody how to do an operation live. From operations to equipment in Japan or China, remote everything today, just like Zoom, people can't go anywhere. You can't get on an airplane and get off today thanks to COVID and these glasses are really good for that purpose. And in this case, CES, we announced this new pair that are really, really sexy looking. And I could share more with your audience. If that sure. I mean, you're calling these the NGSG, the yeah. next generation smart glasses. You know, a lot of people are familiar with the what, what Google tried with Google Glass and kind of went nowhere, I suppose, at least for now, but maybe not. Well, we'll see. But tell us, this is this is a different concept. You've been focused on specific kinds of applications, right? Yeah, in the enterprise space. And our glasses are designed to be a workhorse. They're IP67 rated, which means you can put them underwater even, use them in a dust storm, temperatures so hot that a human being can only be there for like an hour and they operate well. They've got eight core processors in them from Qualcomm, Wi-Fi connectivity, this incredible imager it's the 4k camera on board with image stabilization so those products and in fact if you look behind me there that guy right there with the black cap on he has a pair of our industrial versions and they're they only weigh like three ounces so you can do an operation for 16 hours and still wear these things comfortably right so this guy is tough it's rugged it's designed to go to work and it's not something that an average joe would use where walking down the street you know um so th that's the first markets that Vuzix has been going after enterprise all the way. But these next generation glasses that we're working on, well, the ones next to those this way, that pair right there, that's our blade. We announced that a couple of years ago, started shipping maybe a year and a half ago. And they kind of look like Oakley's, but they're chunky still. They got a big two inch display engine that's in the right hand temple and they're kind of big guys, right? Our next generation glasses, these, these guys right here, you can see they have the look and feel of a conventional pair of glasses. And yeah, they the, do. And the, the, you can you can even have them with the prescription lenses, I suppose, too, right? Correct. That's correct. And it all happens because we have these next generation display engines that are only this big. That little thing is the size of a pencil eraser. 
And if I were to point it at the wall and turn it on, it would project a big image up on the wall. This guy goes in the temple right here, disappearing in the side of the frames of the glasses. And the processors are in the temples, batteries are in the back end. And we even have full featured versions that have cameras in the front of them for the, you know, the more advanced industrial kinds of side of it. And this form factors got enough space in it to sport even LTE radio. So they're basically the future of a phone. And you're, there's no wire dangling down to something you're wearing on your hip or anything with these. This is it. The batteries are in the back end of it right here. One in, one in both temples. Right. So there's there's no cables um, they are Wi-Fi, Bluetooth connected to your phone or if you have the LTE pair, which won't, th these products are coming out at the end of the year, by the way, we unveiled them at CES, which is not unusual for tech companies to show their newest and latest stuff coming for the year. Um, and if you have the LTE pair, literally, they'll just tie onto the network and you can directly make phone calls with them. And I assume 5G will be coming if, if you have LTE. Well, there's a bit of a ways before the radios and power profiles and those kinds of things fit well in smart glasses, but that's going to happen. I'm confident of it. In fact, we're doing stuff with companies like Verizon around the 5G and the Mac, which is the cloud and edge-based computing stuff that puts NVIDIA graph graphics processing power in the cloud, but to the glasses, you can run a really low pro power profile and that high speed return time, the sub 10 millisecond returns allows you to render stuff in real time, but the processing power and everything's done in the cloud. It's pretty amazing. Well, you did capture uh, several innovation awards at the Consumer Electronics Show. Congratulations for that. Thank you. And so tell us uh, the different applications that you envision for this. I, I know one from your website is, you're really looking at the, the education market among, among many others, I suppose. Yeah, well, I mean, if you think about it, right, you're a teacher and you're trying to teach somebody, oh, go with something basic, how to cook eggs. <laughs> you got to hold your phone up as a teacher, right? And you're in home ec class and you've got the pot in front of you and you got to hold the phone up and then you got to crack the eggs in it. And, you know, it's this mess as the director, filming person and the person trying to teach at the same time. It's tough going put our glasses on, you have a first person point of view, your mic and everything is built into the glasses. The cameras are image stabilized so you can cook the egg just like a person was standing where you were standing and share that with people as you're doing it. That's a, an example of an education piece. And another one is how I described earlier where open heart surgery, and in fact, we have doctors that do this today now. We have a relationship with firms, some of the biggest medical supply companies out there today. And they're doing exactly that where a doctor is explaining how to use a new piece of equipment. He has the glasses on and he might be teaching 500 other people live, this streaming stuff for how to set up, use this equipment and perform that particular operation. Now on the medical side, you might imagine that's true right on through to how to even set up the equipment. And this is a big deal today because getting people inside of hospitals is a challenge thanks to COVID. That said, People aren't going to get on planes in the future. Well, there's no need to send a technician to China and he's in Beijing one day and Shenzhen two days later. And, you know, he's there for a week and he visits three plants or in a day he can visit all three plants just to have the glasses in the, in the facilities. So these things are going to be greener. They're going to be they kind of conserve power. They're going to save money. Well, they do that now. And going back to the old days where million milers, tech guys on planes 24 seven, there's just no need for so much of that today. Now that all this remote connectivity works as well as it does. How affordable can this technology become? And what's your vision for this? I don't know, do you envision this going mainstream that a lot of people would be wearing these? The biggest problem with augmented reality and smart glasses and even VR, quite frankly, is the things are so big and bulky, right? So VR at home, I love it. I, it's a blast. I use the Oculus Quest all the time. It's, it's an interesting, but nobody's going to use that walking down the street, nor in the real world. And in the real world, if you look like a glass hole, I hope nobody is offended by the term, but everybody might remember when Google came out with Google Glass because you had that camera right in a person's face. And on Saturday Night Live, I don't know if you remember the skit, but where they, hello, glass, and the guy dips his head back and all this stuff that made you look like and act like a nerd. 
Um, none of that stuff works for the mass market. You need glasses that are fashion forward. You know, when people get their new iPhone, they polish it and they're so proud of their, their fashion statement phone, glasses are worse. So the first step in the process to being mainstream is you got to have something people will want to put on. And that's where Vuzix has a lot of its focus. You can see in these next generation industrial designs. These, these glasses are so easy to give the ability to do things like answer the phone, answer text messages with them, leave your phone in your pocket. You never have to take it out again. You're walking down the street, you ask Alexa, can you play my country and Western playlist, please? So you're walking down the street, the music's playing, you never took your phone out of your pocket. You're on the hill skiing, the same sort of thing. You're out there, the baseball game's going on, you got your, your kid, it's his first time and he hits the ball and what do you got? Your head is stuck in your phone trying to record that and you miss the event. All that stuff can happen live now with the glasses on. You never have to take your phone out of your pocket. And you yeah. can be recording video or? Oh, oh yeah, I mean, this thing is designed. It's got a ton of memory on board. You can stream it to the web even if you want to. So it's designed to be a recording device. If, now the, we have pairs that will be without cameras and pairs that do have cameras in them. Um, you know, there's potentially the stigma of is a camera gonna be an acceptable thing? You can buy a lapel pin that records your day. You know, you can have, everybody's got a phone that's got cameras on both right. sides. Right, I mean, we're seeing that today in, yes. in all kinds of scenarios, good and, good and bad, yes. all, all of the, the cameras that are out there. And so, there are companies like Snap that all they do is sell glasses that have cameras on them. So I think the stigma of the camera is less of a problem. I think it's more the oddball look when you put these things on that looks like you just stepped off the Starship Enterprise. But you have a display there too, right? These are running an yeah. Android operating system? It runs Android and there's binocular displays. When you look out in front of you, a little further out, is a binocular display. It floats out there. Literally, you could reach out and touch it. And in fact, some of the videos that we have, if you look up Vuzix, NGSG, CES on YouTube. I'm sure there's links to our videos. They're on our website also. And you can see they're, they're great looking glasses and they support left and right eye video. So it's binocular and it literally looks like you can reach out and touch the video. How affordable do you think you can make these as you ramp up? Well, the pair in the back, these guys right here, those are all in one single quantity between 15 and 1700 bucks, something like that. Um, but they're, they're tools, right? You go to work with them and they're tough and they're now this pair here, we're going to have a full featured set that has everything in it. And it'll probably be that 1200 to $1,500 kind of a price point, but there's no reason why these things aren't in the price points of a smartwatch kind of a thing down the road when the volume is there could easily get there. They, and they have every capability of a smartwatch plus it's in the glasses. Right. And there's smart watches that you can get for four to six hundred bucks that have cellular radios built into them. So you're almost at that point where you don't even need a phone anymore with your smart watch. It's going to happen with glasses. It'll it'll reach a point where you could just leave your phone at home and maybe not even own one. And the battery life, uh, given the size of these, how big of an issue is that? That's the beautiful thing about this new display. <clears throat> this display is a self emitting display. And what that means is every single pixel you can turn on and off and set to a certain brightness level to the tune of like two or 3 million nits coming off the display. So it's super bright. Competing products that are on the marketplace today use front lit displays. And the way they work is a red, blue, and green LED runs like a flashlight, full on, all the time, million pixels going full blast. And then the pixels tilt, or if they're liquid crystals, they're the rotation of the polarization of the crystals on the surface of each pixel determines how much of that light gets projected out of the engine. This guy right here, you turn on the pixel that you want. So when you're walking down the street and you're getting directional information and it says 500 feet, hang a right and there's an arrow, you have 600 pixels turned on, that's it. 600 versus millions, you know, the power consumption profiles go way down on glasses that are like this. It's like the smartwatch itself has an OLED screen on it. And that's why you mostly see black kinds of stuff on your smartwatch. Because most of the pixels that leave off, when you turn them all on, it draws a lot more power. Doing that, you can really stretch the power profiles and how much time the glasses will run. The blade in the back has got a little bit less power than what our next generations have in the battery system. 
that said that you can stream a YouTube video on that thing for two and a half hours, two to two and a half, depends on you know what the video is and the resolution of it and those kinds of things. But so full up movie, two and a half hours kind of thing, let's say these guys will be a fraction of the power consumption. So it, it ought to be a significantly longer battery life, especially if you're using it you know, during your day where you're not watching movies all the time on it. I mean, they're not really designed to be, a, they're an information display. You know, maybe you're looking across the street and you say, what's the Yelp scores for that restaurant? The cameras run, they go out to the web, knows where you're at because of GPS, calculates what you're looking at, says, oh, that's a Wendy's and it got 0.1 stars because they got, don't take it the wrong way, Wendy's, but maybe they got, they got mice that they found in the floor or something. I love Wendy's by the way, <laughs> not trying to throw anybody under the bus, just that's an example. So you're looking and you know, that information comes up and it goes away. And then maybe 20 minutes later, you get a text message and you say, uh, respond to text message, uh, let's meet at the bar later tonight. Those kinds of use cases, this thing might run for days kind of a thing, just depends upon how often it's you know, doing its thing. Really interesting. So the display is on when you want it to be on. It's not on all the time, right? That's right. Because there, there are people, as, as you know, and, and don't get this wrong, because I obviously love tech. You can look at the name of my program here. Yes. But, <laughs> um, but, you know, there's backlash now against people looking at their screens all the time with, with the phones and how much screen time all of us have, especially now, maybe during during COVID. Are you worried about the potential for backlash, uh, that this is just too much having this in front of you all the time? I think it's going to make it better. People are not going to have their faces jammed down inside of their phones anymore. The information will be there when they need it. And when they don't, they don't have to take their phone out and look and phone out and look and phone out and look because it'll just be there when they want it and when the information arrives. Plus, they have situational awareness now. I've seen people walk right out in the street in New York City with their face down in their phones. I mean, you know, you're not paying attention when your face is jammed in your phone. Whereas with these guys, you're seeing the real world at the same time. This is an augmented display. When the displays are off, they're as clear as a regular pair of glasses are. So you could automatically have them go off when someone, say, is driving, so there's not the distraction. Correct. Or when you're walking down the street, the camera systems could say, hey, be, be careful, there's a car in front of you, and flash red light, like my car does right now. If I'm right. backing up and I'm not paying attention and there's somebody behind me, it slams on the brakes for me. All of those things could be implemented in, in these classes. And I think you'll see those kinds of things happening down the road. Terrific. For more information and to follow where this is all going, Paul, where's the best place for people to go? Vuzix.com. That's V-U-Z-I-X dot C-O-M. Terrific. Well, congratulations on what you've been doing. Sounds great. Paul Travers, thank you for taking the time with us. Yes, thank you, Fred. It was fun. <laughs>